Okay, welcome everyone to this first episode of Mysticism Mondays, where we study the rich tradition of Christian mysticism. Now, there are two forms of mysticism. So there's mystical phenomena, and then there's the mystical path of spiritual ascents. Mystical phenomena pertains to supernatural, extraordinary graces that certain people have been given throughout history. Stigmata wounds, the, the physical marks of Jesus Christ's uh, crucifixion, supernaturally corresponding to his marks on the cross. Visionary experiences, levitations, ecstasies, Eucharistic miracles. These are all experiences of mystical phenomena. There's also mysticism as a path of spiritual ascents. The, the journey of the mystic is a path of spiritual ascents. So, for example, in the Christian tradition, we acknowledge three major um, phases of spiritual ascents. The purgative, the illuminative, and the unitive. And between this threefold journey, there are two dark nights, a dark night of the senses that happens between the purgative and the illuminative path, and then a dark night of the soul, which is a deeper dark night filled with immense desolation and a sense of void and abandonment by God. And it's a purifying uh, process, a process that increases one's dependency on God by a feeling and understanding of one's immense poverty. And through, after this dark night, there is a sublime, beautiful, unitive state where the soul reaches such an immense communion with God that with St. Paul, it can say, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It's a spiritual marriage. It's a transformation. And in this threefold path on, on the mystical journey, there are different grades of prayer. Um, you can go from vocal prayer to meditative prayer to acquired contemplation to infused contemplation. So in the following weeks, we'll explore those grades of prayer. What do they look like? How does the progression appear in a person's uh, spiritual life? And what do you do when you encounter the dark nights, these desolate states? How do you persevere? How do you train yourself to surrender with a resilience that relies on God's grace in the midst of the pain? We can ask the question, which is more important, the mystical path of spiritual ascent or mystical phenomena like these great gifts, stigmata, visions, levitation, ecstasies? Of course, maybe I shouldn't say of course, maybe I shouldn't presume, but let me say, of course, this path of mystical ascent is more important because it speaks about interior conversion and growing into a deeper communion with God. However, that doesn't mean that the mystical phenomena are not important. In fact, a number of great saints and mystics have had mystical phenomena, which has allowed them a deeper turning around, a deeper conversion of life. St. Paul hearing the voice of Christ on the road to Damascus. St. Francis hearing the voice of Christ from the St. Damiano crucifix. Francis, go and rebuild my church. In mystical theology, hearing a sacred voice that's called a locution, the mystical phenomena of locution. So sometimes these graces, these secondary mystical phenomena, are used to inspire a deeper urge and inclination towards communion with God. And therefore, even though they are secondary, they are still essential in the spiritual journey. It doesn't mean that every person is going to experience these mystical graces. Some people do. Some do not, but every person can, in fact, 
go through this process of mystical growth, mystical ascent, the purgative, illuminative, and unitive paths. And some of the great theologians, Father Reginald Gergou Lagrange, the great Dominican theologian of the 20th century, he wrote that every person is called to it. Every person is called to the life of contemplation, to enter a state of mystical prayer, which this threefold path um, describes. So in the coming weeks, we will look into the intricacies and the nuances of what does the mystical path of spiritual growth um, consist of? How do we recognize it? How do we um, identify uh, a type of self-awareness where we are in the journey? And we'll also look at some of the mystical phenomena and why they're important, how to discern properly between what is of God, what is not, what is mystical, what is charismatic. We'll actually talk about the distinctions between these terms. So it's going to be a fascinating exploration of the great Christian mystical tradition. And I look forward to spending the time with you. God bless you.